Oh no! Oh dear! Slugs and snails! I get many questions in the comments about slugs and snails. So in today's video, we're going to give you our top tips for restoring the balance with those pesky slugs. Hello and welcome back to the Nudig Norfolk Gardener. Now I know that slugs can sometimes seem an absolute pain, along with the snails. But we mustn't ever forget that slugs are actually part of the ecosystem of your garden. Remember, it was the last video of the video before and I show you this, we took the covers off this raised bed, principally because I wanted to show you what would happen if we didn't have covers on there. The pigeons have had a go at this and have weakened this plant severely. And you can see now that the slugs have been having a go at it and they'll continually have a go at it until they've cleared it up. Because the plain truth of the matter is, is that slugs are the garden's recyclers. If anything's left about, they will help to clear it away. Also, slugs play a very important role in your garden in that they are food for animals higher up in the food chain. Birds that visit your garden, hedgehogs, toads, frogs, they all feed on slugs. So if we didn't have slugs, have a problem with the animals further up that food chain. One of the things you don't really want to be doing, and I would encourage you all not to do, is to be using the traditional slug pellet, non-organic. You can't miss them because they're generally bright blue. Yes, they contain a poison. And yes, they do help to control slugs. The problem is, is that they also affect other wildlife within your garden. Very rarely will they actually come along and munch away at the pellets that you put down. But what will happen is, is that they will visit the carcasses that are left, eat those, and of course that poison then enters their system. Now of course for us gardeners, once the balance tips too much in the favour of Mr. Slug, that's when we start to see problems. So at the beginning of the video, I showed you some of our spring greens where they were munched by slugs. I saw some seedlings that we had in there with just one leaf. And of course slugs, they can actually eat several times their own body weight once they have a feed. The other problem is, is that they can lay hundreds of eggs during their lifetime. So they reproduce really quite quickly. Last year, we saw here one of the wettest, dampest, dullest summers that we've seen in many a year, didn't we, Mrs. Yeah, we did. And that often does result in a bigger slug population. They are, after all, mollusks. When it's dry and it's hot, they don't want to come out. They need to be hiding somewhere damp and wet. So it stands to reason that we have a very damp, wet and dull summer months. They're able to do much more damage because they're out for much longer. But 
what can we do? And one of the very first things, and something that you should always be doing, is keeping your plots as tidy as possible. Now I mowed the lawns this morning, and Mrs W has been around edging all the plots and strimming around by the fences and anywhere where we can't get the edging shears in. And especially, as I say, if you have grass like we have. I do like to get into the edges where, where the grass is thick against the fence and that you, they quite often hide there in the day, don't they? Yes. The less places that you had for them to find solace during the midday sun, the better off you will be. We also often talk about keeping on top of your weeds. And that's because they can hide under those. I said earlier about them being able to lay hundreds of eggs during their lifetime. They'll have nothing more than to find debris, a weed, or a leaf that's fallen from your plant. Lay their eggs underneath it where they'll be nice, moist and damp, where their eggs can hatch. Also by keeping the edges nice and closely cropped, there is no bridge for them to find their way over onto your plots. They get as far as here, it's quite a step for them actually. But if you let your grass grow long and it goes over like that, it forms that bridge where they can find their way easily into your plots. This bed has recently been vacated of its brassicas. We had cabbages in and around here. We have a few more carrots which I'm going to be lifting. Other than that, for the last week, week and a half, I've left it just as we left it. On purpose, I wouldn't normally leave my garden like this. Just so that you can see what will happen. These bricks and slates, we use these to keep the covers down. And they work very well. The environment we use is quite rough, so the slugs won't actually, they don't like crossing over that. But if you're not using them for that and you just leave them lying around, well, let's have a look. Well, there's some beetles. And ants. <laughs> and ants. There's one. There's one. I'll happily hide in those damp and dark conditions until conditions are ripe for them to come out. Now, whenever we do find these slugs, what we do with them is we put them onto our compost heap. Or sometimes give them to the chickens. <laughs> or sometimes give them to the chickens. But, yeah, onto the compost heap where they can do the greatest good. They can munch away as much as they like on the compost heaps because they don't do any damage. That has to be your default position, your starting point. Get rid of anything that's lying about where they can hide. The slugs that we have in the garden at the moment are probably quite active now because the sun's gone in. It was quite sunny up until about midday today. It's just gone overcast now, so conditions are a bit more favourable for them to go out and do the things that they want. But aside from that, you will find that you will have problems with slugs. Nobody's immune to them. Even the so-called greatest gardeners that you know of, they will have slug problems. It's inevitable. As I said before, they are part of your garden's ecosystem. And it would be a very, very strange garden indeed if you didn't have slugs. The 
trick, as always, is just getting the balance right. This is not war on them. We don't want to destroy them. We just want to make sure that the balance is right. There are many ways that you can do that. But what we've found over the years is that actually no one thing actually works 100%. You often need to use two or three of the methods that we're about to go through in your quest to keep the balance right with Mr Slug. Come right back to the very start of the video and you saw where we've had some leaves that have been munched. That's not terminal. What is a problem is when Mr Slug goes through the stem. And you can see here where we did lose a leaf. It's actually growing another leaf back. It turned out it was a, the smallest of slugs. <laughs> as soon as I noticed that we were missing a leaf, I picked up the pots and had a look. So as Mrs. W said, the very first thing you should do is to lift your tray and have a good look underneath it. Make sure you can't see any of them hiding there, because they will. They'll be hiding there, ready and waiting. So as soon as you see seedlings nibbled, look under there, and actually... Oh, there's one there, look. I there thought I'd got there. them all. <laughs> Just waiting to come out and have its feed. Varmint. Slippery on your plants. <laughs> I can't get hold of him. <laughs> they look quite small but when they start getting stretched out and moving they're, they're, he's bigger than you thought he was going to be isn't he? He doesn't like me I don't think. <laughs> there you go, a really good example of that at work. And I would advise you to check your plants every day. I mean, I think to myself, how have these slugs got onto this bed? There are no wooden legs. <laughs> no. <laughs> how has Mr. Slug got there? But they do. The next thing is, is to grow susceptible plants off the ground. You can't do that with everything. Strawberries are really susceptible to slug damage. Oh, look, Mrs. W. I know. We actually have we some have, flowers yes. on these ones that we only planted yep. these, what, about three weeks ago, yep. wasn't it? Yeah. There's mm. quite a few of them are now starting to come through with buds and flowers. Early strawberries. Lovely. I digress. <laughs> well, yes, hopefully the slugs won't get a hold of these and neither will the birds. So well, that's another way to help things along. One of our favourites, and I have to say, I've read two or three different reports, and they say the things that we're going through, they, say, they don't work. Don't even bother trying them, they don't work. The very first thing I read in that report is, using beer traps does not work for slugs. It certainly does for ours. We've definitely got there's at least 20 in there. I lost count, I think. But and that's 20 less slugs yeah. that can do damage to our plants. And we've got one or two dotted about in here. We have, we? yeah, yeah. It's something that we've found that has happened just within this area, within the polytunnel. Well, I think we are getting on top of the problem. I don't see much else that's getting particular slug damage. No. So we must be managing to address the balance. You can see that when I put these patchoyan to the ground, when they were small, they were attacked by the slugs. These are the leaves that were attacked by the slugs. Since then, I've done something about that, and it's actually one of my favourite products. It doesn't cost the earth, and in certain applications and certain areas, well, you can see for yourself it works really well. It's actually wool pellets. 
and it's a byproduct of the wool industry. Can I get a picture of those? There they are. And what happens is, is that as you're watering, they get wet, and hopefully you can see that they have little sort of spikes, fibrous sort of strands, aren't they? And the slugs don't like crossing those. Now look at these leaves now that have come back. The new leaves coming are all untouched, aren't they? Yeah. Now these things are organic, and they're called Vitax. Slug gone wool pellets. And the thing that I really like about these is that once you've harvested your plants, these are biodegradable. They go into your soil and they actually become a feed, a source of feed for your soil. You can see that Soil Association approved, British Wool Supplier. And actually, they don't harm your pets. Yeah, they're family friendly and pet friendly and everything, aren't they? They're also, they're organic, suitable for organic gardening. Now, I know some people don't even like to use the organic pellets. And then they don't actually kill the slugs at all. They just simply stop the slugs from getting... It's a barrier to your vegetables and fruits and things, isn't it? Plants. And that's, you know, what I say. You sometimes need to use several methods. Barriers. Uh, beer traps. Sometimes this... And that's all just to keep the balance right within your garden. Now, I have left a link to this product in the description below. And you can see just what a difference it has made to these pak choy. They're now basically quite clean plants. The damage you see on them was the damage that was done while they were very small plants with no protection. Um, I've seen reports and seen other people say that copper tape doesn't work. It's not going to be 100% effective. None of the methods that we're talking about are. It's about striking a balance. We just need to stop them getting to our plants until those plants are strong enough to be able to protect themselves and withstand any attack that might come later. Now, myself and Mrs W don't actually grow a huge amount in containers or tubs. But on the odd occasion when we have done, we've used this, and it's worked pretty well in conjunction with the wool pellets then on the surface of where you're growing. So it's like double bubble. Should any of them manage to get beyond this, They've then got to get past that. So we're doubling up with some of these methods. You'll increase your chances of restoring that balance. Another thing you do with containers is to raise them up maybe on feet. What I would say is when you do use that copper tape, so if you're going to be using on one of these pots, you want to put it round about here, just under the lip. Not right down the bottom, and not necessarily right at the top. Because they could arch themselves with one end of the body there and the other there, and slide themselves over. So round about there, I've always found, works the best. Now we're really lucky in that we don't see huge amounts of slug damage out there in the plots. We do strive to keep our areas as tidy as possible. And actually, we lose very little. I think of the plants we've put out so far, I think we lost two, didn't we? Yeah. But we the saw two, damage uh, to. A couple of cabbages, I think they were, weren't they? But they were on the damper side of our garden. Mm -hmm. But yeah, actually, apart from that, there's no other slug damage about there. But if you do garden in damp climates and conditions, it might be an idea that, unlike us, you let your plants grow just that bit taller so that they may be able to withstand an attack just that little bit better. We prefer to put us in when they're still small. I find they transplant better. 
and I'm not looking to change what I do, but we don't, in general, garden in really damp, wet conditions. It might be one year in ten that we see those types of conditions like we did last year. So that's another thing that you can do. Just let your plants grow a little bit taller, so a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and then they can withstand an attack on them should Mr. Slug come along. Something that we haven't tried before, but I know Mrs. W is very keen, and we've done a bit of reading about it, so we shall be trying, but that's putting things around your young plants that have pungent smells. Yeah, I read somewhere, I think it's quite an old fashioned idea to finally chop up rosemary leaves and sort of sprinkle them around your plants and things. When I did it, I also put a beer trap down at the same time. So they say they worked, but I'm not sure whether that was the beer trap or, and the rosemary or whether the rosemary would work on its own. Not sure, but it's got to be worth a try. I'll try anything if I'm going to going to get a result <laughs> sage could be another thing because that's really quite a pungent herb isn't mm, it yeah yeah but we'll let you know how we get on with that and whether that is effective or not but one thing i do know that is effective i've tried this and uh i think i saw this on youtube somewhere i can't think where i saw it but and that's to use a plank of wood now it's the wrong well i say it's the wrong time of the day now it's probably the right time of the day it is mid-afternoon and if you get yourself a plank and lay that there like so later on today those slugs that are about are going to come out tomorrow is meant to be a sunny day here in Norfolk as it warms up and that sun does come out, they'll need to seek shelter. They're not the cleverest of animals. They'll take the easy route and go underneath that piece of wood that I've laid down there. Hope you come out tomorrow lunchtime and you'll find there's one or two slugs under there. And if you do that, three nights in a row you want to gather yourself quite a few slugs that you can deal with them how you want to deal with them but for us up onto the compost heap where they can do all the damage they like now one thing that you can do and which it is very effective and it's free <laughs> well I say it's free almost free you'll need the use of a torch and come out into your plot at dusk. You'll find all the slugs are out, wanting to have a feed. You'll find them with your torch, go around with your bucket and put them in there. That's actually a really effective way to move them, in our case, to a different part of the garden, the compost heap, where they can do the things that they want to do. Now, if you like this video, we'd love you to subscribe to our channel and follow us along our journey, our new dig journey. This is year four for us now, isn't it? It is, yes, yeah. And along the way, apart from the uh, sew-alongs, the grow-alongs, the grow-with-us, and the garden tours, along the way, we do make these videos where we give you our tips and our tricks and our hacks to help you out there in your veg garden or on your allotment. And of course, don't forget to turn on your notifications because then you'll be notified whenever we upload a video. Now do remember that it's not a war with the slugs. If we got rid of slugs from our garden, our gardens would be poorer places. We wouldn't see the wildlife that come into our garden because those things wouldn't be there for them to feed on. We would see much more debris about because they wouldn't be there to clear it up. They are the garden's recyclers. Do have a great gardening week and we 
We shall see you back here in our Norfolk garden on Thursday. <laughs>